Welcome to our video tutorial on setting up the awning on the Oz RV GT. You will have already watched the video on how to set up the main tent. Now I'm going to take you step by step in setting up the awning. In preparation for putting up the awning, I've laid out all the poles relative to the position that they go according to the pole diagram and placed the poles that attach to the main tent up against the side of the camper. To make things easy for me, I've lowered the center bow pole by loosening off the two spreader poles on this side and lowering the pole down. It'll make it a lot easier to zip the awning roof across to the main tent. Also, it'll be easier to reach the eyelets to attach our ridge poles. Our ridge poles, two, there's two of which, are a C2. They have a hook at one end and a flat tab with a hole in it at the other. Inside the sock here, and at the main centre bow pole. If you reach in, there is a little chrome eyelet to attach the hook to. So now, I can simply hook my pole in. I'll extend it a little to make it easy for me later. And it's ready to go. Now I'll attach the centre one and we can begin zipping on the awning roof. A great way to do up the awning roof zipper particularly if you're smaller in stature, is to grab a window pole. It's easy to identify. It's, this one's an F1. It's got a little spigot at one end and a hook at the other. What I do is I put the hook through the tag on the zipper and use the window pole to pull the zipper along the roof of the awning. Another handy use of the window pole is using the hook end and pressing the Velcro down from the main tent onto the awning roof. When I set up the awning on any forward fold camper, I'll generally start with the middle ridge pole. Why I do that is I can get it set up on its spigot pole and the weight of the canvas on the awning, either side, will pretty much hold it in place. I won't have to hold it unless, like today, it's a little bit windy. But still, it's staying put makes my life a lot easier. So what I can do now is attach my front spreader pole. So while I've got hold of this, I've still got relatively good control of the whole awning setup allows me to grab my B2 corner spigot pole, pop that on. Now I can grab my forward ridge pole and connect it as well. So pop that on, get it roughly adjusted. Now I can put the corner of the awning over the top and onto the spigot. On each of the spigot poles across the front, there is a hole drilled a distance down from the spigot. It's easy to identify which one goes where because the hole on the center spigot pole is a lot further from the spigot than it is for the end poles. What the hole is there for is for this little metal hook, which is on the elastic, to clip into the hole. That now holds the eyelet on the canvas on top of the spigot. The wind won't lift it off, which comes in handy. Now I can start adjusting the poles, work my way back. But before I do that, I'll put a tent rope over this just to hold it all in place. Now that's fairly taut. As you can see, it's standing up by itself already. And put that rope on. Tighten it up a little. And that'll give me some security as I work my way back across the awning.
The setup at the back of the camper for the awning is a little bit different to the front in that the ridge pole is an A3, which has a little flat tab with a hole in it at each end. It attaches to this corner spigot pole and goes to the back corner of the annex with another spigot pole that goes up underneath an extension of the main tent side. So we'll put this on and get you to come in for a closer look at how we tidy up the other end. Now just here on the extension, you'll see a little brass spigot hole or eyelet. What we do is we take our rib pole, pop it underneath, and place it through the eyelet. Now that I've done that, I'll extend the pole and make it reasonably tight. That'll keep it in place. And once we fix up this front corner and put a rope on it, we'll put in a spreader pole, which will tighten up all the back of the awning here. Again, at the front corner, put the spigot through the eyelet, grab our little silver hook, pop it in the hole on the spigot pole, and adjust our ridge pole to get it nice and taut. Just for safety, we'll put our rope over the top of this. Tighten it up a little. Now we can go and tidy up the centre of the awning by bringing the canvas over, putting the spigot through the eyelet, Now that I've got my canvas over the top of the front spigot pole in the centre, the spigot's through the eyelet. I've raised this pole just enough to expose the little hole drilled in the bottom that I can put the silver hook in. That'll now hold my canvas on the spigot. The wind can't blow it off. And I can go around and adjust all the poles and get the awning looking like it's supposed to. This part of setting up the awning, I guess is the trickiest part, but it's not difficult. It's inserting the D4 pole. This one's a bit unique. It has a white C-clip at one end and the flat plastic tab with the hole in it at the other. The way this attaches is the center ridge pole, which runs straight back through the center of the awning. The C-clip end clips onto that pole firmly up against the side of the main tent and this flat tab goes over the spigot on the spigot pole in the back corner that we set in on the canvas extension off the main tent. Before we go too much further, got to remember to put your centre tent rope on before you raise the awning up. We've still got a little bit to do, but a way to make sure that the wind doesn't lift the awning when it's pegged down is run your rope around, back underneath itself, and then over the spigot. Pull it down tight, and what that does is it stops the poles lifting if the wind gets underneath the awning. Now what we need to do before we raise all this up to its correct height and readjust the main tent poles is put all the poles that have Velcro straps into those Velcro straps and 
put our four spreader poles in. At either end of the awning, there is a little nylon tag loop here, which is there to add an additional rope to the end. Beneath that, what we do is we put an E3 pole. Has a rubber boot at one end, C-clip at the other. We pop that directly underneath. At this end, at the drawbar end, it adds additional support when you set up the ensuite tent. Also, for inclement conditions, whether it's windy, rain, etc., what you can do, install this pole and run a rope from this little loop here down to the ground. You can even run two ropes, peg it down, and that'll add additional stability and strength if you have windy conditions. An important thing to do if you've got wet weather is to lower each corner of the awning. This end and the opposite end, lower them down. What that does is it increases the pitch of the roof to ensure that water can't sit on top of it. If you leave it set up normal and water does manage to pool, it can gain enough weight to damage the poles and damage the canvas. You don't want that to happen. Also, do this even when you've got the full annex set up with the walls. Make sure you lower it to the point where water simply can't find any way to sit on top. And there you have it, folks. That's how easy it is to set up the awning on the Oz RV GT as one person. Much easier with two and a lot quicker. The kids can help hold things still while you put it all together. For more great tuitional videos, head across to our YouTube channel, check out all the setup and pack up videos. And head across to our website and download the owner manual. This is our package to ensure you get the best possible use for many years out of your Oz RV GT.